So I'm sure you've heard about Dell E. Let's take a look and see if it lives up to its hype. Um, welcome to Dell E. Meet your creative co-pilot. Um, what, what's really interesting is the choice of the word uh, co-pilot here. So th that is the name of the GPT-3 model that provides assistance to developers as they try to write out the programming code or comments by using the code around it as context, or known as prompt. So GPT-3, of course, is also by OpenAI, which is the same guys around behind um, Dell E. And I have a video about building apps using GPT-3 that you can go and check out on, on my YouTube channel. Now, let's take a look at the Delhi Create Iterate with Delhi. Let's click on Continue. So we get 50 free credits during our first month and 15 free credits will refill every month. After that, you can always buy additional credits. Okay, we can learn more. Uh, we could. We just open that in a new tab and we just say Start Creating. All right, let's take a look at the some of the paintings here. Uh, we could also create our own. Uh, I have a few prompts that I've thought about, but let me just click on surprise me and see what it gets. A cat submarine chimera digital art. It sounds about right to me. Let's click generate. Let's see what it creates. There's a few tips here. Describe the context in which an item appears a blue orange slice and half link on a blue floor in front of a blue wall. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. It, give you the, it tells you what's the context around it. So this is a, a cat submarine chimera digital art. And this is uh, four different pictures. They actually looks pretty good, right? I could edit this one. It says that longer specific descriptions tend to work best. Okay, so let's try something very specific. Let's say LeBron James um, running a triathlon in the middle of nowhere. And let's go ahead and just click on generate. Let's see what it gave us. This is a fortune telling Shiba Inu reading your fate in a giant hamburger. Digital art. Uh, does it look like a fortune telling Shiba Inu to you? And that's 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 our guy here. That's our LeBron James, um, running a triathlon in the middle of nowhere. You could uh, click into any of the image, and it give you a much higher resolution. You could also uh, sort of scroll through them. I'll look at the biceps here, and look at the guns here on, on on both arms. It's in the middle of nowhere. Another one here, and I think you could also click on the variations. Click on edit and click on the variations. If you click on edit, it, it allows you to rewrite your prom and change part of the prom. You could also erase an area to modify. So you could, for example, take away this area. Take away all of this area. So let's erase the background, all of the blue background. Let's remove all of that. And then you could try to generate again. So this is the original picture and we see that now we, we erase the, the background and we asked it to find new ways to generate that. And so now it generates four other versions for that. And that's pretty cool, right? It, it, it just takes away the background and replace that with some clouds and some, some of the mountains. Let's say we like this one. So we didn't really cleanly erase that. So we don't actually have a, we, we should have done that better. But let's click on variation to see what would be provided to us. So you see that one of the tips was that you you would have put a comma and then put in the style that you want, right? And and the style would be something like pixel art, digital art, uh, impressionist, uh, photorealistic, you know, all of this. And you, you specify, you put a, your prompt there, you put a comma and then you put a, a style and it would generate in that style. So give it a style to tell it what to generate. And here are the different variations. So, you know, uh, the, this is the original one. And so this is kind of, this allows you to iterate on your, on, on the kind of art that you're creating. So first of all, you give the prompt, you pick one, you can erase the background, you can change a couple of things, you can click on it and get a few more variations, replacing just that, that, that thing that you remove, right? And you're starting to get a few, this or some of this becomes a little bit fur, further away from the original ones. So now you see, instead of a, a hat, you see a whole helmet here. And again, if you don't like something in here, you could always delete that specific area and then just click on different variations. But let's actually go ahead and try something else, shall we? Let's try, uh, let's say something like a photorealistic painting of an Asian couple spending honeymoon in Venice, right? So let's click on generate. Let's see what it gave us. And you can see a sort of a history of all of the, all of the prompts that you type in and all of the different paintings you generated now on the right. Okay, so the faces here are not great, but this one is okay. And all of these faces are there, they're not real. They're imaginary in a way, right? These are not images that exist and they're just imaginary. And some of them are not that great. You see that this one, for example, the, the background is a little bit distorted. Um, this one is slightly better. The background is not as distorted, but you could still see. Um, and if you change that to, let's say, photo, if you change that to, say, surreal painting, of a couple spending honeymoon in Venice, right? And you could click generate. 
let's see what it let's see if it un understand the, the subtle differences between photorealistic and surreal or surrealism if you look it up on wikipedia surrealism is a cultural movement that developed in europe in the aftermath of world war one in which artists depicted unnerving Ill illogical scenes and develop techniques to allow the unconscious mind to express itself. So um, it's influenced by abstract expressionism. So you have a uh, and and also influenced by postmodern art. But you see that these are some of the examples of that. Um, let's take a look at uh, one and maybe try to uh, change this. Maybe this this is okay. But let's try this right. And again, you could click on edit. You could uh, again try. Let's try to use the a smaller paintbrush this time. Smaller stroke here. So. Smaller stroke like this, and we're gonna just delete this area. Take away the moon. Take away the moon. Um, so I think the moon reflection should also be deleted, but let's keep it there anyway, and let's click on edit. Or let's click on generate. Right. So I'm gonna keep the reflection. I'm just gonna remove the the moon up there. And now instead of the moon, so we have the moon there here, but we also have. Say you know a couple. This is a little bit of an abstract, but you can see like a, a male and female, you know, a couple there, um, somewhere in the air, love in the air, uh, some signs here. But it looks pretty good, right? Like it, it, it fill up that area with some other variation, and you could download them. So I could click on download. Let's say I like this version the most. Well, the downloading is happening, I think, in the background, uh, but it's running a little bit slow. But then there's the share button. That's the save button. I think the save button probably do the same thing. No, it actually goes to my collection. Um. So I could go ahead and just click on, just give it a name, just say Dell E, so D A L L E one dot PNG, and now it's saving. So I could open that up in Game uh, or maybe Photoshop, up to you. And you can see that uh, it's it's pretty high res. I downloaded that and it's two point one MB, and um, you can see the pixels are clearly very, uh, you know, very clear. It's a uh, one thousand twenty four times one thousand twenty four. That's the ratio, um, and it looks pretty good. So so it, it's not a it's not a small picture at all. It's actually pretty beautiful. And this is actually sixty six point seven percent. If I zoom into one hundred percent, this is how it looks like, and it still looks pretty good, right? As a as a painting that you can print out and put it in your home or something. Uh, it's probably what I'm gonna do. I actually just bought a new house, so this is probably the first thing that's gonna go on the wall. Anyway, close that out. Um, but then you also have the share, and to share you wanna create a public page to to share, and you can click on publish, and it would just go ahead and uh, make it public, and so anyone with the link could take a look at it so this is the link you want to just copy that link and paste it to your friend and say hey here's a here's a picture of uh, what uh, i could paste this to my wife and say hey this is what's going to go in our bedroom um, we actually had our honeymoon in uh but this so this is this would be perfect for it and then you could click on copy link and send it to someone um there's a few other things here let's take a look oh uh, you could close that out you could look at the history you could close that out as well if you don't want the sidebar you could close that out here um let's take a look at um uh, what happened with the new button so it says this will clear all the current history and start a new session so you don't want if you don't want any of this history to be persisted just click on new and it will clear all of that and you'll start a new session in that all of this will not be safe right so that's that if you click on upload you could upload an image file and this will, it will when you upload an image file it says don't upload photos of people without consent images may be reviewed to enforce our safety policies we may use your data including uploads to improve our models if you click continue you can then choose to crop the image and then you can click click on done and then you could um edit or generate simulate images so you could say generate variations of this image or you could say edit image and then give it a um a, a description and say like oh we want i want this style but in a dark you know maybe in the middle of the night or, or something you could add some sort of description to it and modify the image you could generate variations of the image you could uh, crop some part of the image out and then add your own you know, style to it uh, i'm not going to do any of that let's go back to this one we of course need to also look at there are some of this this is a, a bohos style painting of marilyn monroe this is a cartoon of a monkey in space this is a 3d render of a cute tropical fish in an aquarium or a dark blue background digital art um one thing we haven't really seen a lot of is a pixel art, so we can try something like this. High quality photo of a monkey astronaut, let's say this. We say, photo of a monkey astronaut, pixel art. Okay, photo of a monkey astronaut, pixel art. Uh, let's see if it could do uh, pixel arts. Because we see a lot of other kind of styles, we want to see what about pixel arts. And mind you, all of these takes uh, credit. So we're going to talk about credits in a short while. Okay, so there's the photo of a monkey pe astronaut uh, pixel art. Uh, I think, you know, one thing I can see this being very useful for is when you're a solo developer, you're an indie developer and you're making games. And usually, 
uh, being an indie developer, you're the only person on the team, right? You're making the game, you're writing the code logic, you're writing all of this stuff. I think having a tool that allows you to create pixel art really quickly and just maybe click on this and then modify some stuff, edit, maybe take away this pic this part of the, 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 you know, the clothing logo and add your own logo on it. That's really simple. That's, this is something that anyone can do. Open up in paint, you could do that. Um, you know, and, and that saves you a lot of time instead of having to create the whole thing up here. So I feel like there, there are some opportunities there for you to just create quick pixel art for game game assets uh, i used to work in the game industry and i know how much time um you know game studios spend into creating all those original arts uh, let's take a look at uh, the uh, maybe the other stuff here we we have the credits um join the delhi discord visit the open a ai api so you can click on the api and maybe read up on how to link that um with your own app actually i have a i have a video uh, on using open ai api so you could read you could look at that video uh, how Dell e credit works. What is a Dell e credit? You can use this for a single request, generating images through a text prompt, an edit request, or a variation request. Any of this use one credit. Um, credits are detected only for requests that return generation, so they won't be detected for content policy warnings and system error. Uh, how many free credits do you get? You get 50 for your first month, 15 for uh, every month after that. Free credits don't roll over to the next month, so they expire a month after they were granted. But you get fifteen new credits, so you might as well use up all the credits the first, the first, uh, in the first month because uh, they're not gonna be carried over to the next month. You can buy more credits, and using your credit card, I, I believe. Uh, you can also if you work in a multi-person organization account, I think that that's how we use it in my own team. Uh, I have an organization account, and I create sub accounts for team members, and I put them into the org account, and they could use. Um, they could go ahead and experiment with this while using the credit tied to my credit card. So what are the differences between free and paid credits? Free credits expire a month and paid credits expire 12 months from the date of purchase. You get the same set of rights, including commercial use, regardless of whether an image was generated through a free or paid credit. So that's really good because, um, you know, if we talk about the, the scenario earlier about game developers, indie developers, they get to generate all these arts on the fly and they don't have to uh, uh, worry about, you know, commercial licenses if they are on a free plan or whether they're on a paid plan. So that that's pretty nice and that's kind of a quick tour of delhi and my that, that's my first experience i haven't actually uh get into this is the first time while i'm do, recording this video this is i'm actually also experimenting this on the fly and so i hope that uh we, we covered most of the pretty much all of the uh, features anyone you know if, if you want to go ahead and try it just go go to open ai and just click on the uh, they, they may ask you to uh, for you to be added to an invitation list so go ahead and just put yourself on the invitation list and uh when you when when your account comes around you could can go in there and create some art and if you want to experiment on your own um, with, with open AI models and stuff, there is the how to use the API and stuff like that. I, there is a video. I have a video on my YouTube channel. Go ahead and click on, the, click on it and you can find uh, more information about working with open API. To, I'm using GPT-3 in, in that video, but maybe in the future, I'm going to create one that uses Delhi. So you can create a web app, allows people to maybe pay some some amount. You need to pay some, you need to charge people for that kind of apps because otherwise, how are you going to cover the cost on here, right? So charge a certain amount, a fixed amount, maybe a subscription amount, and people could, folks could go in there and generate ads, for example, or create creative uh, a cats or memes, um, you know, a, a meme generator, right? So when Delhi invitation arrived in my inbox, I, I obviously I feel very excited and I want to share the excitement with you. And this is why I'm doing it together with you, a, a quick walkthrough, a quick tour of uh, Delhi. So hopefully you find it interesting. Um, I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.